Okay, uh, I'm just going to invite up uh, three very special guests now, members of the High Achievers Club on stage are going to share with you their key areas developing your business to its full potential. Uh, first of all, I'd like you to welcome uh, Ray McGavin. Uh, Ray McGavin is uh, from First Count McGavin and Associates, Chartered Accountants. Ray is a chartered accountant and is an expert, an expert in buying and selling businesses. He has sold over 20 businesses on behalf of clients over the number of years, valued at between one and eight million. Just to have here, there that uh, not me, but someone read there that less than one percent of businesses that are formed ever get sold. Is that true? Well, that's the statistics that, that came out of a uh, survey that was done in the states. I'm sure the same applies here. Uh, a lot of people get into business because they have an idea, they have a product or service that they think they might make money out of selling, or they just like the idea of being their own boss. Uh, those people. Those people uh, start their business, they concentrate on the profitability of the business, and they concentrate on what they can get out of the business. And they don't really concentrate on the value of the business. Um, a lot of people get very emotionally attached to their business, particularly when things are going very well. Um, and a lot of those businesses never actually get sold. Uh, they, they hold on for too long, they're too emotionally attached, they fall into this owner's trap and eventually they get too old to think they'll have it or business. Somebody else just comes along and takes the business from them. So, so, so in your view, what are the most important things for people out there because you're getting that, 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 that possibly thinking of selling a business or not selling a business? What would be your advice or not to get emotionally attached? Or yeah. It's hard to do. It's hard when you've got your, had built your own business, isn't it? Yeah, well, there's, there's, a few, well, there's a few things. First of all, what I'd say to you is if you're, if if you've any intention of selling your business, you need to have a plan. It's a bit like rule being, it's a bit like what Eddie was saying earlier. Like the Irish team aren't going to go out and win them. <coughs> Excuse me, they're not going to go out and win them Saturday without a plan. They're not just going to show up and go, right, now we're going to win this match. You've got to have a plan, and there's loads of pillars to that plan. I suppose the key things, um, well, the three, if I was to give you three examples, three key things I would concentrate on are financial performance. <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, <coughs> financial performance means that the company must be profitable. Like I think it's very hard to sell a business that isn't making money. So the business, what, what, what we like to see is a company that's financially sound. Um, get your financial house in order. Um, and the other thing we like to see is a slight trend of rising profits. So we like to see growth potential in the business. When a buyer comes along to buy a business, he's looking at, as you mentioned, consistency earlier. The buyer is looking at consistency of results and future potential. So the value of your business will be primarily based on the reliability of those future results and how consistent they are. So I know it's, a, it's an obvious question you sell when you're on the up, uh, so to speak, but Generally, when's the best time to sell a business if you consider yourself? Um, so I know it's a difficult question because some people peak and then the businesses start going down the other side and they try to get rid of them or, or, or dump them. Or yeah, well, let me put it this way. Uh, about 75% of businesses and business owners think that they're going to sell their business or they want to sell their business in the next 10 years. And I'd say less than 10% have any sort of a plan whatsoever. Uh, the best time to sell, well, let me ask them, I think what I want to do is ask everybody a question here, and that is, if, if most people are in business here, just tell me what you think your business is worth. First, I'd love to have you just think that figure, what you think the business is worth. Okay. And now... They'll tell me. <laughs> okay, so you've all got that figure in your head, okay? Now, think of another number. The second number I want you to think about is what you will be prepared to sell your business for. Okay? Now, I'm going to make an assumption here, and that is that most of you, for most of you, that second figure is substantially higher than the first figure. Okay? Now, what 
we do is we try and help you get from that first figure to that second figure. Okay. Well, I would say to you is the best time to sell, to answer the question, the best time to sell is when your business is at, is at its peak. Okay. When your business is at its peak, don't be greedy, don't hold on. That's the time to start thinking about moving it on. The best entrepreneurs buy and sell businesses all the time. That's the difficult time, though, isn't it? Because people are thinking, hold on, I'm riding the rest of the way if you have a restaurant, or if the gym is going well, you know, why sell now? Wait till things change. Sometimes it's too late, obviously. That's, yeah, because when the business is out of speak and when it's doing really well, that's when it attracts buyers. Buyers will be attracted by a business that is making money, that has a strong management team, that has an excellent product and service. If your business is doing well, that's when the buyers come along. Okay? If your business is in decline, the buyers lose interest straight away. So when your business sells its peak, and when you think, you, like I know a lot of people who have been in business, they've done very, very well, and they regret that they didn't sell when it was peak. They left it too late. Didn't that happen a lot uh, with the kind of hotel trade in the sense that pubs, the super pubs in, in, in Dublin at a stage where they were flying and everybody was out, out drinking on Friday, Saturday night, should have got out then, waited a bit longer and then you saw the closed doors and suddenly the pubs with nobody in them. So that, that happened a lot, didn't yeah, it? That happened a lot time. Yeah, that happened a lot of times. To be honest with you, 2008, 2009 and 10, they weren't great years for people who wanted to sell businesses, they weren't great years. Um, but people, people saw, who sold businesses four, five, six, seven, they made a lot of money. And what I say to you is that uh, business is cyclical. Um, there's, a, there's an air of confidence out there at the moment. People are get, becoming more and more interested in. So people are talking about uh, business. First of all, businesses themselves have consolidated. They're now beginning to show profits. Buyers are out there, and. Within the next two or three years, I'd be very surprised if we're not going to see a lot of business acquisitions, a lot of companies. And you, you talked before about being emotionally attached to your business, um, you know, which is vital. Do you think, and I know a lot of entrepreneurs talk like that, do you think that everybody in here that has a business should be thinking at some stage of an exit strategy as soon as they can? Absolutely. People talk about that. Decide that before you actually Absolutely. even start the business. Yeah. And, one, and one of the biggest things you need to do make sure that you have an exit strategy is you need to have you need to build up a management team buyers are interested buyers are interested in the people who are in the business They're, they know that when when they buy the business from you you're going to get a lump of change and you're going to be gone in two or three years time so they're what they're interested in the business is in the business that can survive without you okay so the second thing i would say to you is additional financial performance is make sure you have a very strong management team. Okay, thank you very much. Great to be with you. Thanks very much.